imagine you're sitting on a runway in a plane. You're buckled into your seat. The captain says you're ready for takeoff. And you are the co pilot. Not only that, but the plane you're sitting inside of is a 30 foot long spacecraft with four rocket engines on the back of it. The plane begins to take off from the runway at the spaceport. It lifts off the ground, going straight up. You're pinned to the back of your seat. The plane is going almost Mach 3, over 2,000 miles an hour, straight up into space. You see the altimeter clicking by. It gets to 30,000 feet, the place where most planes would stop, but not this one. You keep going up, 100,000 feet, 200,000 feet. The sky around you begins to turn black. The stars appear. The familiar landscape below you gets smaller and smaller. And soon those rocket engines on the back of this plane shut off, and it's silent. In front of you is this beautiful landscape. The stars dot the sky. The blue earth fills your view. And you are sitting there weightless, 300 and 30,000 feet into space. You can see thousands of miles in every direction. You can see the whole curvature of the Earth. You can sit there and look through a telescope or do a research test or snap a selfie or just sit back and take in it all. These five minutes will be some of the most memorable of your life and you can do any, whatever you want with them. It's your flight, you're the co-pilot. You can steer the plane so it's looking down at the Earth or above at the stars. Soon you glide back down to Earth, the whole flight lasting only half an hour. You land, having experienced space, having gained a new perspective, having taken a step and gone where so few have gone before. This experience will be available to everyone in the coming year as commercial space companies begin to take flight. I'm 16 years old, and I'm going to be the youngest person in space ever. I've always loved space. When I was little, I wanted to be an astronaut. And so this past March of 2014, I went to a lecture at the, the local observatory in Los Angeles, like I've been doing since I was eight. The speaker was XCOR Aerospace, a commercial space company focused on the development of reusable suborbital space vehicles. The speaker talked about their innovative rocket technology, their new spacecraft links, and how they were driving this exploration of space. I was so excited. I was fascinated. So like I always do, afterwards I went up and met the woman who spoke. We exchanged business cards, I asked her a few questions, and then I went home. But I decided I had to email her, because I couldn't get this one thought out of my head. How did kids factor into this all? I was sitting there in the audience, listening to this, this drive they had for exploration, but I couldn't figure out how I could get involved. I didn't hear that. I've grown up in a generation that never saw a man land on the moon, that never would ha felt this excitement of the space race. Our only tie to space ever, really, was a shuttle program that was discontinued a few years ago. We've never been part of that exploration, and I thought we should be. So I told her, that I thought it was so important to engage youth, not only so that we have an educated generation for the future, but so that these commercial space companies have a customer base in the, in the coming decades. I told her what I thought, I thanked her for coming to speak at the observatory, and I sent the email. That was it. I didn't expect anything else. But then I received an email from one of the head people at x -Core. They invited me out to come tour their facility, to come to their hangar to see their spacecraft being built. I, a 16-year-old kid, got to share my opinions with them about how to get youth involved in space. This was the tour of a lifetime. 
But I figured that was it. I got a great tour. I got to express my opinions. But then I received a call. They wanted to create a position for me at the company. <laughs> so after working with them to figure out what this was going to be and figuring out the logistics of employing a 16-year-old at a spacecraft hangar, I became the Youth Engagement and Outreach Associate at x -Corps Aerospace. I took a step. I sent an email. And now I'm doing what I love, going to schools and organizations around the country, speaking about how we as youth can get involved. I talk to kids about the opportunities there are for us in space, how we can change it, how we can be a part of it. I also speak about this new and emerging commercial space market, one that is revolutionizing the way we think about transportation. This competitive market has sparked innovation that has made the prospect of exploring more affordable, financially lucrative, and better for our own world in terms of the environmental impact. By building reusable suborbital vehicles, these spacecraft have become safer and more reliable modes of transportation, while also making space far more accessible than it ever was. But the part that I find the most interesting are the experiments. The room on board these craft for experiments. Before now, if a group of students, whether it be kindergartners or 22-year-old grad students, wanted to test something in the microgravity of space, they had two options. Either pay almost a million dollars to send it up on a sounding rocket, or wait up to 10 years to get it sent up to the International Space Station. But now, in the coming year, students will be able to design an experiment and watch it fly into space that same year for about $1,000. This changes everything. This means that a group of students can do a bake sale or a car wash or a Kickstarter campaign to raise the necessary funds. This opportunity doesn't just extend to students, though. Whether it's companies, organizations, Researchers, they can be doing this kind of work of more affordably and more frequently as these ships are flying almost four flights a day. For example, at Purdue University, a group is working on creating the floating water bridge, testing whether a water bridge will form in the microgravity of space in an experiment. At Johns Hopkins, a team is working on exposing aerogel to vacuum of space to collect micrometeorites and bring them back for analysis. Right here in Milford, Ohio, students at Mulberry Elementary have created what they call ladybugs in space. These, la <laughs> These kids know how important ladybugs are to plant life. They also know that if we're going to be living in space, we're going to need plants to sustain us. So they decided to test how these ladybugs would react in the microgravity of space. We are eventually going to have to live outside of our planet, and that means there's still so much biological and health research that needs to be done to determine how we react to radiation, how plant life grows, how our bodies are affected by zero gravity. In every field of science, there is knowledge to be gained, whether it's physics or chemistry or biology. What we learn out in space can help us in so many ways here. And multiple schools and organizations around the country are working on collaboratively building these experiments to send up. Outer space can do so much for us in so many ways, whether it's solar energy, habitats on other planets, or faster transportation. Yes, going to suborbital space is a small step. But if we continue to build on this technology, if we continue to drive this exploration, we can go anywhere. We will take that step to orbital space. We will take that step to the moon again. We will take that step to Mars. These steps are important individually, but in order for us to succeed, it can't just be these individuals, these businesses exploring. It has to be all of us together, engaged in this effort, engaged in this exploration of space.
If you're a student, learn more, get involved. If you're a parent, bring this discussion up with your kids. Take them to an observatory. Let's read the news about space again. Let's write the news about space. Let's go outside and look at a gorgeous night sky filled with stars and wonder at it. Let's share that excitement, share that curiosity. I'm 16 years old, I took a step, I sent an email and now I'm doing what I love and I am going to be going into space. I am taking that leap along with so many of the brightest minds in the world into space, into the unknown. So my question is, will you join me? Will we take that giant leap into space once again? Thank you very much.